As I look at it, everybody in the world loves wine. The guy that's hard on his luck, is in the gutter, he's drinking wine. The guy that's got billions of dollars, he's drinking wine. A lot of people think I know a lot more about wine than I do because I'm the founder of wine.com. I'm really more a computer guy than a wine guy. I used to say in Napa Valley there's a lot of people that don't like me. I sort of take that back. I don't think they don't like me. They just don't understand me. People tell me there's no way in the world I've done all this stuff. They think it's luck. You know, they're just like, oh, he got lucky. He came up with the idea of wine.com. Oh, he got lucky. He started a Pinot winery when Sideways came out that year. Yeah, part of it's luck, but a lot of it's just hard work. I learned from experts that, you know, it all takes place in the vineyard. Robert Mondavi did tell me, own the grapes, not the winery. That was one reason why I ended up planting grapes, even though I don't drink wine. The cash crop for Napa Valley is wine grapes. I only owned a winery because I couldn't deal with the wineries out there that were buying my grapes. You know, I can't get somebody to sell my wine, I have to go out and sell it. You know, I started up a shipping company because I had to have somebody ship my wine. I mean, this is a very difficult business. Um, it would probably be easier to sell drugs across state line than it is to sell wine. I travel all over the world selling my wine. I don't do things normally. It does get overwhelming but I can sleep on the airplanes. Hawaii is my world of sales. I sell to most of the major resorts. It feels more like my home, because when I do go there, I have a lot of friends that will meet me at the dinners. They think I'm a local. It's a whole crazy group. I mean, to me, it's if they're sincere to me and they're, they're truly friends, then they're welcome on my boat. It's the people that he knows, that they know, this big network and organization. What strikes me the most is that he's, he's all hands-on, so he's doing everything. You know, his, his unique way of producing that wine and telling his story is really amazing. It turns a simple wine event into something magnificent. People come and when they leave, they say, wow, that was a great wine event, because they remember the stories that Dave told and the fact that it, it is his wine. He, uh, he's very determined um, and he, He's, he's put a lot of time and effort into the state of Hawaii. I am a wine politician. And, and the reason I would say I'm a wine politician is whenever I bring my wine out, it always, nobody wants to turn it down. So in that respect, I can be the life of the party if I'm bringing the alcohol. When Dave comes out here, he pours wine for a lot of commercial events. Is a revenue generator, obviously, you know, Sony Open and a lot of the restaurants in town. But when it comes to these guys, you know, it's all, you know, it's, it's, it's coming from his heart. It's because he's genuinely, uh, you know, thankful. I don't probably pay him back enough, but, you know, being able to use the boat or, you know, having a little bit of fun, it's about giving and receiving and, you know, that, that's what's great. I probably still don't know yet what I really want to do. I mean, when I grow up, I'll figure out what I'm going to do. But I've got to find the next big thing that will launch me. I don't care about wine. This could be corn as far as I'm concerned. I just want to make the best of whatever it is.